Welcome to Eat Sleep Nerd, a podcast where you can check out, go AFK, and relax with us as we discuss all things nerd. Comic books, video games, movies, TV shows, and anything else that gets geeks more worked up than bears on cocaine. In this episode, it's the Pedro Pascal Extravaganza. We discuss The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 1, HBO's The Last of Us, Episode 8, and the unbearable weight of massive talent. We also review Cocaine Bear. Plus, we round things out by checking in with the nerdy news. Welcome to episode number 47. I am your dorky DJ, Corey Winter, and as always, I am joined by my nerdy brother, Josh Winter, and our geeky friends, Jason Summer and Christian James, and we are joined by special guest, Andre Randolph. Welcome. Welcome to the party. One of, one of us. us. One, of one, us. Of one of us. One of us. One of us. <laughs> uh, so yes, it's the Pedro Pascal episode. Extravaganza. Just, just kind of worked out that way. It's Christian's joke from like a decade ago. Uh, yeah, really a decade. Like yeah. literally a decade. Ago. <laughs> pizza, pizza. Is it? No. Yeah. <laughs> extravaganza. Sorry. Get a little extravaganza. Yeah. Okay. What is an extravagant <laughs> vegetarian? What is it? Don't ask. No, don't ask. Okay. <laughs> it's actually a band thing. Yeah. We would um, invite the high schoolers of surrounding areas mm-hmm. to come join us for a halftime show. Oh. Professionally. We're not just inviting yeah. high schoolers to do uh, yeah, stuff. Yes. Right. Dur- during the football game. Yeah. You and a football game. And so we would have like, we'd have like 250 or so people in the UNA band. And, and then, then like by joined by like eight hundred other yeah. high schoolers. Wow. Yeah. But I just was, remember that the year that for some reason like fifty bass drummers showed up and, and there couldn't, was couldn't none of y'all play together. There was no tempo in that show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Aside from just faster and faster and faster. <laughs> just just sounded sounded like a drum roll. Yeah. Know, they were just excited fra, to play. Fra, fra. <laughs> it was a, a nuisance. But yes, it was an extra an, an extravaganza with extravaganza. So, uh, Andre's hey, here. Pedro Pascal. Yeah, Andre, Andre, <laughs> I, Andre, I saw you shaking your head. Like, so were you part of the... I, I was. Oh. I remember the bass drum thing. I think the thing that um, kind of killed me about the extravaganza was the 50 drum majors that no one paid attention to. <laughs> no, no. Um, <laughs> we just wanted to play loud. We yeah. had, like, one every five yards. Yeah. Like, there's literally one on every yard line. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't even watch the one that we had for UNA. I just... Oh, I was the champ of him. Gordon, that's true. <laughs> it's true. He was second base. He was yeah. the tempo. I didn't listen to you either. <laughs> you can't. Li- you can't listen back because that doesn't make super sense. hard to listen back. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. Just hope you're in time. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Andre here, and as with anyone that we like to bring on this show, found him in a parking lot. We <laughs> that is <laughs> true. Hey, bud, you ever been on the internet? <laughs> Come here. Wanna? <laughs> I. <laughs> I want to know what you geek out on. It could be anything. Chess. Chess. I knew you were going to say that. Chess. Mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Chess is my jam. I wanted to get into chess, but uh, you I am, weren't smart enough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. I had that same moment. Yeah. 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 There, there's a lot of strategy to like checkers. So yeah. like chess is another level. Yeah. There's no correlation between chess and, and intelligence, but there is a lot of theory in chess. I will say. Yeah. Did you hear about the guy that um, that was like the chess champion, but found out he was cheating the entire time? Yes. Han, yeah. Hans Niemann. Yeah. 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 Like, he, he wow. Was American. I, I hated it for him. Talk about like fake it till you make it. Yeah. Very much so. <laughs> he was putting all kinds of money, going places, just cheating. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's the dream. <laughs> ben Affleck and Matt Damon are going to make a movie. Oh, yes. I hope that comes out. They're going to call it The Pawn. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. They're not big on titles that are more than like one word. Right. Or pawn. Yeah. Checkmate. I don't think you can do checkmate. I think that's taken. Is it? Like taken. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are we just just yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, so uh, before we get into the show itself, what have you guys been geeking out on this week? Well, anybody? Anybody? Come on. I don't know what Jason's been doing. Yeah, Jason. Why? Because uh, you're so far away, <laughs> we don't know uh, what you're up oh, to when you're not out here. Oh, mostly, yeah. this is this is mostly me checking on you. Okay, so I'm I'm okay. Thanks. You know things are yeah. going well. Um, I've been playing Final Fantasy 14, and I've been okay. enjoying that. Been uh, actually this week, I got set up at a gym locally, and uh, I'm going to start going to the gym this week. For 
for those who have forgotten, this is like the little Stan Lee that pops up in the, in the corner <laughs> of the comics that tells you to go read past issues. Like eight weeks ago, eight episodes ago, we talked about we were all going to start working out and trying to lose weight. So that Jason's crushing us. Like, it's not even close. Um, I'm pretty sure I've actually gained weight. Corey looks like he's about the same. <laughs> like, I don't. Anyway, <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I say that to say not only is Jason winning, he's doing a really good job. Thanks. So proud of you. Yeah. yeah, so we are very proud of you. Yeah, you can really see it in your face. Yeah, like your face literally looks slimmer. Woohoo. Or you maybe you just move the camera further away. I don't know. <laughs> but No, I know it 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 I feel today was the first time I actually felt like it, it actually started. I'm starting to see it. So it works out that I'm starting the gym this week. Anyway, so that was kind of fun. Um got that set up. And uh, of course then I watched all my assignments for this week. And uh yeah, but we'll talk about that later. I like how you call them assignments. <laughs> Like Sometimes they feel like it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, gotta sit down and watch this turd. <laughs> so yeah, like you get to the end of the class, you're like, oh, I didn't do my homework. Yeah, and, and it kind of oh, worked. God. Like, I wasn't feeling like the best this week. I was going to go watch Cocaine Bear, and I really didn't want to, but I was hacking all along. <laughs> and I would, I really would have felt bad sitting in the movie theater with other people. Just And so I was like, oh, gee, mm, I guess I can't go. Yeah. It was a legitimate reason, but it didn't break my heart. <laughs> oh, darn. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> so that's uh, what I've been doing. Chris, what about you? Um, This week was kind of meh. Uh, did a lot of work. That is meh. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's not fun going in at 3 to come home at 11 at night. Yeah. There's not a lot of room to do anything. But mainly, I've been... Kind of really, like I guess you can really call it. I'm geeking out on like the new MLS, okay, season, mm. uh, especially because Huntsville is getting an MLS team. Yeah. That's cool. That. Mm. <laughs> so I've what, been playing a lot of like what, uh, stop laws. What is MLS? Major, Major, Major League Soccer. Soccer. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. nerd. <laughs> yeah, and Huntsville's team is the uh, feeder team into the national, national team. team. Yep. By the way, will they also be the Trash Pandas? No, no, no. I think they're just the Huntsville Soccer, club. the Huntsville SC. Yeah, the Huntsville Soccer Club. Yeah, yes, it's very traditional. I'm learning so many acronyms today. <laughs> <laughs> I feel my world getting bigger, but in an abbreviated. We have one letter at yes. a time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also, uh, I've been playing a lot of FIFA. Nice, and you know, mm. those, those FIFA games are strong. Like, like, what is there some good quality games? What, is, what does FIFA stand for? Oh my god. <laughs> You know, that's one I don't know. It's something, something football association. Good job. Andre's going to look it up for us. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he's pretty, he's pretty active. Federation International Day Football Association. Oh, it's oh that's why it doesn't make sense. It ain't American. All right. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so anyway, Josh, yeah. what have you been kicking out on this week? Um, I am nearing my rewatch, nearing the completion of my rewatch of The Next Generation. Cool. Um, I always tell myself I'm going to start a different series and I'll watch a few episodes and I always end up going back to next generation. And we talked about this a little bit before, but TV was just different back then. Like writing had to be good or you just didn't last. And it was a different setup. Like they had almost hour long episodes. Like these were 50 minutes plus and they did 25 episodes a season. Like, these are not like we get excited now when it's 12 episodes, not nine. You know, they did 25 hour long episodes a season and still had seven seasons. Yeah. So it's a testament to, to how good it was. But yeah, it is like I think I can definitely say without any exaggeration or doubt that it is my all time favorite TV show. Jason, do you concur? I concur that it's his favorite show. Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I know it's, it's really up there. Uh, Firefly is probably my my top. Oh, okay, one. yeah, that checks out. But but Star Trek: The Next yeah. Generation is certainly way up there too. There's there's a certain dignity that comes from Picard, <laughs> right? I would pay an inordinate amount of money to get a hug from Patrick Stewart. Just like that level of acceptance from such an authority figure would warm the soul. That's normal, I guess. Um, it's not weird at all. No. I want that from like Ian McKellen. I want that from Pedro Pascal. Like the Pedro Pascal extravaganza? Yeah, that's why I said it. Yeah. 
Are we getting back on track? Not yet. We're going to see. (laughs) Andre, feel free to just say nothing, but have you geeked out on anything this week? Yeah. uh, Okay. Okay. I I can think of one thing that I'm one foot in the doghouse for. Um, (laughs) I impulse bought a 75 gallon fish tank and researched over 48 hours African cichlids. So now I'm going to have a 75 gallon fish tank. That is not a small amount of gallons. Nope. It's pretty big. It's, pretty, it's, a lot, it's a lot of gallons. Yeah. It's it's a mini aquarium is what I'm calling it. I don't know if it qualifies for mini at this point, but it'll be cool. If you call it mini, though, your wife comes around faster, right? Uh, so, yeah, the one foot in the doghouse. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wonder what the qualification Qualifications are <laughs> extravaganza because <laughs> you have to have a thousand books to order it to be called a library. Yeah. So what are the qualifications for an aquarium? I'm sure there's I have no idea. A new a numerical standard. Like, yeah. I have a better question. If I say I have one, do I get a tax write off? Probably maybe not. You have to turn it into some sort of business. Are you <laughs> yeah. farming well, algae? You can put a cross on it. You know? I, will, I will live stream it. I was going to say, are you live counts. streaming it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably not, but just paid my taxes. Not thrilled about it. Need the tax write off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a write off. What about you, Corey? This week was an awful week. And I noted out on everything to make me to make me feel better. Um, so one thing I was really playing this week was I finally got into the Grand Theft Auto trilogy remastered, like the definitive edition that mm-hmm. came out last year. Nice. And I didn't pick it up right away because it got some pretty bad. Critique. Universally panned. Yes. Is the phrase that went around the Internet. And Universally panned. Yes. And so it's been patched since then. And. I, I finally I watched like this four hour long YouTube video about the history of Grand Theft Auto, like the entire history of the entire franchise on accident. Um, I was like, wow, I really miss the times of the early days Grand Theft Auto. So I was like, OK, I have to go pick up this remaster. And I, I started playing Grand Theft Auto 3 and my plan is to get the Platinums. Um, of course three games. <laughs> well, because you, you couldn't get trophies back in the good old days when those games originally came out. So like there was no platinum. There was no trophies. And so I can I can finally get my platinums on these Grand Theft Auto games. And I booted up Grand Theft Auto 3 and I've been plowing through it. And it's exactly like I remember it. That's San like, Andreas. Three. San Andreas was the is, sequel. Uh, Liberty City. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Three Vice City San Andreas. Yeah, yeah. So no, it it brought me right back to where I was in 2001 when I was way too young to play this game and was loving it. Like it was like we, we were way too as young. as someone that has never played the game before. If you were to pick this up, you probably would not enjoy it because it does not really age well. But for being able to play that 20 year old game on my PlayStation Five, and it's still like it it runs really well. Um, I'm I'm enjoying every second of it. The combat feels really weird now. Like it's really hard to like shoot anybody, and the driving kind of sucks. But um, yeah, it's putting me right back to where I was 20 years ago. So I'm I'm loving everything about it. So having a fun time. But also, Josh and I watched the unbearable weight of massive talent. To, extravaganza to kick off our Pedro Pascal <laughs> extravaganza, and he was a he was a delight. He was so cute. He was, he was adorable. Like, like it's the best word for it. He was adorable. He was adorable. I mean, okay, we gotta talk about Nick Cage for a second because this was. I'm so glad he's he's going back into blockbusters again. He's he's having a a, a renaissance. I feel like we're throwing are. around the word blockbuster. It was much. a big haul. Well, okay, <laughs> most of the movies he's done the past five years have had like a five dollar budget. This actually had a budget. <laughs> <That's> okay, but <laughs> but being a mainstream movie does not mean it's automatically a blockbuster. Blockbuster is an achievement. I agree with Josh. Anyway, <laughs> Nick Cage was awesome because it was just like Easter egg after Easter egg from all of his movies. And he was just over the top Nick Cage at his best. But pairing him with Pedro Pascal, like that's a combination that shouldn't work, but it was fantastic. Yeah. For those who don't know the gist of the movie, Nick Cage plays a fictionalized version of himself. Um, In the movie, it's N-I-C-K, not N-I-C. Mm, oh. there's the difference and um in this in this again kind of exaggerated version of him he is so broke that he's literally like begging directors for chances just to audition um and he he ends up getting kind of a bone thrown to him where there's an exuberant billionaire 
who would like him to come to his birthday party and he'll give him a million dollars if he mm. comes. And he gets there and the billionaire is Pedro Pascal. And except Pedro Pascal is not playing Pedro Pascal. That'd be too meta. It it ends up spiraling into a into a drug cartel and homages to his previous movies and he's having a slight mental breakdown where he talks to a younger version of himself it's a crazy movie it's one of those things that you can't really describe you just have to go watch it okay but if you force yourself to do that it is it is a fun movie it's it's a wonderful movie yeah um and it's a good salute to nick cage because it really does honor everything he's done and it's kind of one of those things where until you really sit down and think about it you may not necessarily realize how many movies, especially if you're our age, millennials and up, how many movies you watched growing up that had Nick Cage in it? Like, it's actually a huge collection. I mean, yeah, like, I've talked about how Keanu Reeves is maybe the best action star of all time. It might actually be Nick Cage. Like, think I about mean, all he's the got action, some bangers. Think yeah. about all the action movies Nick Cage was, was in in the 90s. Yeah. Con like, Air. The Rock. Ooh, The Rock. Yeah, Gun the Rock is seconds. so good. 60 seconds. Yeah, Gun 60 seconds. Which apparently he did a lot of his own driving. I, that's impressive. Yeah. Jason, I know you're disappointed he never got to do the Tim Burton Superman movie. So disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so disappointed. If you guys ever want to go down a rabbit hole, start Googling that. Yeah. It's so, kind of like a fever dream. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, I mean, that's really what. But like, it's, it's, it's so wild. I wish I could have seen it. But, I but, wish but, it had been but, made. But more like you wanted to see what this travesty would be. Like how bad would it have been is more like, like. But like, what is so spectacle? bad it was good? You can't. I mean, I don't know. It's a completely hypothetical. But yeah, anyway. I know. Yeah. Just saying, everyone forgets there was a time where like Nick Cage was top of the A list. Yeah. Like tip top of the A list. The last right. thing I'll say about Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent is, uh, I guess, in Act Two, slight spoilers, but not really because it's just ridiculous. You, you can't together. spoil this movie. Yeah. They, uh, Pedro Pascal and Nick Cage take acid. And for like 20 minutes, you just <laughs> see them doing crazy crap on acid. And it's just the best time. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's fantastic. Like, high five. Yeah, I give it. I give it four Nick Cages out of five. I'd give it four. It's 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 definitely a weird movie. Yeah. For what the movie is, it's five out of five. But in just terms of good movie, four out of five. Yeah. All right, we're going to plow through this news section today because nothing major happened last week, but there are some things we just need to touch base on. Josh, why do you do that every time? (laughs) (laughs) So the first thing I want to talk about is Funko. So Funko Pops, you guys know, like my entire shelf of Funko Pops up there of all my Spider-Mans. It's delightful. It's it's kind of like Hello Kitty has no mouth. (laughs) It just creeps me out. Okay. Funkos, the toys lining the clearance section at every store you've ever been to. I was going to say, if you go into a Walmart, Target, GameStop, they're they're everywhere. So Funko, the toy and collectible manufacturer best known for its Funko Pop Vinyls line, is sending at least $30 million worth of its products to a landfill. As reported by Kutaku, Funko revealed during an earnings call that it has so much idle stock sitting in warehouses that, financially... Its best option is to throw 30 to $36 million worth into the garbage. What? That's why. Here's my thing. Is it like $30 million of how they priced it? I'm, sure, like I'm sure it's matter retail. of worth. Yeah, I'm sure it's retail. <laughs> actually, no, I'm I'm assuming it's probably materials cost. Now, I, any- I actually agree with Corey. I think it's materials cost because they wouldn't throw it away if they didn't already have the profit. No, but that's that's my point though, is that when you look at a loss, you look at loss versus retail value, not loss versus mm-hmm. cost. That's a different oh. analysis. So what they're literally saying is they have so much back stock that they don't expect to sell. It's better to throw thirty million dollars retail of away. expected revenue down. Correct. Okay. I can I can see it going either way. Man, what's that like? I guarantee it's the way I said it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just say you're right without proof. I like guarantee. Gonna... Call Funko. <laughs> guarantee. Uh, so it. this is reminding me a lot of that uh, Atari uh, September story. 1983. E.T. E. Yes, E.T. Yes. I'm glad you guys know. So for the longest time, it was a, a myth in the video game industry that they just threw all these E.T. 
unused, brand new out of the box uh, games into a landfill. Uh, just a couple of years ago, it was actually confirmed someone actually got clearance to like dig into the, uh, landfill. Into the landfill and actually confirmed that no, hundreds Atari really did hundreds. dump thousands yeah. of these games into a landfill. Um, so this is sounding a lot like that. So like 50 years from now, are people going to be like, oh, did that really happen? And then someone goes and finds it. I feel so, like 50 minutes from now, you'll be on that landfill. Yeah, right. I'm <laughs> so, go that landfill. I know Corey and I talked about this. So we know it's an, a landfill in Arizona. And how many of those could there possibly be? <laughs> right. So, I mean, with a little bit of calling around. Yeah. But you can figure it out. But I think this is, is kind of a lesson in oversaturation. Oh, yeah. Like, like the example that I read somewhere was even if you take a, a show that's that's relatively small, like The Mandalorian. It's only had two seasons so far. Now we're in season three. They just released what the expected Funkos are for season three. Even if you are a huge fan of this show, do you really need five different Grogu Funko Pops? Yes. No. Now, Corey, I get it. You've got <laughs> Corey was looking at his eighty-seven <laughs> Spider-Man Funko Pops. I don't even have all of them. <laughs> but, but don't get me wrong. Any hobby is successful for the ultra fans, right? Yeah. But you will not be a successful hobby if you cannot get casual buyers. Yeah. So it is a thing that was designed to be collectible. That's why they're numbered. Like they did everything they could to make you understand it's collectible. And I just, I think they probably had a heyday six years ago, seven years ago. But the truth of the matter is the vast majority of these are now worth less than what you paid for it. And they haven't really specified which brands of these Funko props or like which IPs they're. That's my point. I'm betting it's all of them. I'm 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 thinking with the exception of a few that became very high value, I, I think they probably just have general overstock on mm. everything. Because mm. mm. like I said, you don't even find Funkos in the toy aisle anymore. You find them in the clearance aisle everywhere you go. Comic book stores. Comic book stores. It's in the discount section. Second and Charles has a huge resale section. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's a resale store. Like yeah. that's, I mean, everything in there. The point is it's cheap. And so like game stops nowadays are basically 50% Funko pops. Yeah. So the best thing they could do, somebody buy them, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> best thing they could do would be to like cut the number of new Funko pops they make by like 90%. Yeah. Make it actually collectible. Make it something that is hard to find or that you have to go out of your way to get because they, they oversaturated. They're everywhere. I don't give a crap anymore. We've seen this before. Yeah, my friend Brian at work. Beanie babies. Yeah, my friend Brian at work mm. collects wow. yeah. all the Marvel Funkos. But he said even just a few months back that he quit just because now there's 87,000 of them. He'll never have all of them. There's just no way. And they put 50 new ones out every couple of months because now they're going back into the back catalog of the Marvel movies. Oh, we didn't make a Funko Pop for that nurse that wakes up Captain America at the end of Captain America. <laughs> we need one. one. Yeah. So, like, it, it doesn't matter anymore. They have Funkos for everything. It's not cute anymore. So, yeah. the best thing they could do if they want to save their company is go back to being a small company. Quit being a big company. Yeah. I'm curious, though, as somebody who, like, doesn't collect things, mm-hmm. is is it is the goal to collect all of them of, like, say, Spider-Man? Is it that you want all of the Spider-Man ones or is it that these are somehow valued? Um, to <laughs> well, to me specifically, because I'm the one with the Spider-Man Funko Pops, I bought all of those because I wanted some decor for the studio. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm uh, just trying to think about it logically. Like if they if they oversaturate the market as they have, then like none of them are valuable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's the problem. They valuable. <laughs> so I mean, like, that's the problem they've they run into. Even if they cut it in yeah. half, like. Are any of them ever going to be valuable? Because as collectibles, they're not valuable until several years later. And if you're throwing them away. And that's only valuable if people can't get them. Yeah. Scarcity is what creates value. There's no scarcity. Yeah. So Christian did make a good point. I mean, this is the Beanie Beanie Baby problem. Yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. They're making a ton of them. Like a bunch of like the the Princess Diana's got out. (laughs) And people are like, what am I doing with this now? This is not $2,000 anymore. Now it's just like, I just give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, so do you have one? Can I get one from no. you? Oh, no. <laughs> not at all. I didn't do that. So I mean, oh. don't wrong, like, <laughs> like I like collectibles. I like toys. I, I like things like that. But like I get them because I like them. 
not because I have any expectation that they're going to be worth anything. Yeah. So I don't know. Wish them the best of luck, but I'm thinking Funko might be heading down the drain. I still hold to there's got to be something about being able to throw away that much of your inventory that you have to have profit margins out of the world. So I think they might be okay as a company, but they they need to figure out this oversaturating the market. They write it as a loss, though. It's a tax credit. Which we learned from another dumpster Back fire. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move into our next story. So last week we talked about how Warner Brothers is wanting to make some Lord of the Rings movies uh, because they're partnering with the new studio. So anyway, we weren't sure but if Peter why? Jackson was going to be involved or not because he was not involved with the Amazon uh, Rings of Power TV series, and it showed. Well, I didn't even know that was a question. Honestly, you said you didn't. We didn't know if he would be. I didn't even know that was a thought. <laughs> Uh, so we, we touched on it lightly. Like, mm-hmm. if they bring Lord of the Rings back in proper movie form, right? I mean, would you would you bring back Peter Jackson? Mm. So, reports are coming out via the Hollywood Reporter that Peter Jackson is in talks to be involved with these movies. Uh, so, uh, Jackson and his writing partners, Fran Walsh and Philippa Bowens, maybe, are the precious talent Warner's hopes to get on board with its efforts after Amazon seemingly fumbled its courtship of the filmmaker. After he was apparently in talks to help uh, make the Rings of Power TV series, but they kind of pump up that whole thing. But anyway, point is, uh, he is apparently talking with Warner Brothers to come back and direct these new movies. Hmm. Again, why? I mean, yeah, like, good. But I, I guess I'm just so fundamentally against more movies. Yeah, you mentioned that last week. Yeah, um, like I just but like, this does, is good news, I guess. Does we did pu- what we had to do. Does a Peter Jackson involvement make it a little bit more enticing if he's allowed to do whatever he wants no I, to me i don't know see to me it, it, it actually makes it seem even less desirable because i mean oh, really i mean if they're going to do another lord of the rings series why are we even doing we're essentially just doing more of the same with the same people like with the same director and the same creative minds no, i mean if we're going to do it do it differently so that kind of takes us back to josh's point last week he was saying there'd probably be reboots because it wouldn't really make sense to make more movies because they've already told the entire story right so does it make sense to bring peter jackson back if he's rebooting his own movies oh my god we're gonna get the tom bombadil trilogy (laughs) we're gonna get all the other because it has to be we're gonna get radagaskar (laughs) as gonna be the main character radagast there we go radagast his little poop poop colored beard but whatever i want to i want (laughs) to I want to. I want a prequel for Treebeard. There we go. I don't, the, I don't, I don't, even, the, I don't the, even know what they're saying. Anymore. I want the yeah, Treebeard I saga. I know. Hey, we know what we're talking about. Hey, sure. Radagast was the brown okay, wizard. Hold on. Let's lean into this. Yeah, okay. I mean, let's lean into that. Okay. Things I would actually want to see. Okay. Um, an actual Gandalf and Saruman prequel. That when would there be were cool. still buds. Yeah, all yeah. the things they did leading up to the third. So era, Obi-Wan the third age. and Anakin prior to episode three. Okay. Prior Go to on. the fallout. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, an Aragorn series that okay. leads up to that that covers his times as a as a ranger. A movie that covers the time when Gondor controlled the gates of Mordor. Everyone forgets that Gondor was the uh civilization that built the gates around Mordor. Mm-hmm. It was Mordor that later took them over. Mm. Gondor is what built or is who built the wall Um, because it was designed to keep them in, not keep everyone else out. Uh, Let's see. I'm just going to let him keep going. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's about it. That's about all I got. Because I think think everything that comes vastly before that is what's going to be covered by Amazon. So, again, they're the only you can't really go forward because at that point you're just making stuff up. Like. The series ended from Tolkien's works with the end of Return of the King, more or less. So the only thing you do is go backwards, but then you're in a tough spot because Amazon is covering what happened before. Yeah. So are you going to have competing narratives of the same thing or all you can do is make things that just barely take place before The Hobbit? I don't know. It's just it's they just have such a narrow window of things they can cover, which is why I said a reboot is what would make the most sense. But again, but why? But even yeah. that doesn't make sense to me because that entire that trilogy made 
like tons of money. It won 19 Oscars, I believe. 17. Whatever. Point is, it was a fantastic trilogy as is. Why remake it less than 20 years later? Yeah. So they can um, actually put them on the Eagles to go burn the ring. <laughs> so once I learned about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's, why? Why did that not happen? I mean, it's actually a terrible idea. The whole idea is they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't want Sauron to know they're coming. Riding in on a giant friggin' eagle is pretty obvious. I mean, you just you know duck and dodge, and then boop. so your plan is to juke on an eagle. <laughs> yeah. Thank God you weren't in charge of saving Middle Earth. That is the dumbest thing. Next topic. No, I mean, wasn't there a story about some somebody asking J.R.R. Tolkien precisely about that? And he essentially, he, his answer was basically... Then there wouldn't be a story. It, no. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it was basically like, kind of screw off. He said, he, yeah. he, he told the person, screw off. I didn't, you know, you didn't write the story. He cho- just chose not to do it. Or, like, or, there wasn't or, a reason. <laughs> or get far enough. So Frodo wouldn't get stabbed. He wouldn't get overtaken by the ring and have that weird sexual tension between him and Sam. What sexual tension? First off, that that made the movie. <laughs> what? The will they, won't they is what kept me coming back to the theater. Oh, uh, yeah. It was strong. Okay. I don't know if you just were blind to it. Jason. Maybe I was blind to it. I don't know. Let's okay. rewatch it. Okay. You'll see it. Okay. Hobbit love. Right. Well, this... This is taking a turn. This is taking a turn. (laughs) (laughs) Moving into our next story. So, Star Trek. We got two Star Trek stories to talk about. Uh, The first one is a relatively small one. It's just uh, Star Trek Discovery is uh, officially concluding with its fifth and final season. I mean, it's not a small story. It's not a small story if you like Discovery. No, I mean, like, there's literally just nothing to say about it. It's oh, yeah, Yeah, (laughs) you're right. You got to remember, okay, so like Discovery is not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, I'll say two things to that. It got significantly better after it made its time jump a thousand years into the future. Mm-hmm. And it it is responsible for the modern Star Trek yeah. rena- renaissance. Like whether you yeah. like it or not, it is what made Star Trek popular again. That and the J.J. Abrams movies. Yeah, Strange <laughs> New Worlds is a spinoff of Discovery. Correct. Like a literal spinoff of Discovery. And so... It gets a lot of hate. I get why it gets a lot of hate. They they tried to redo and revamp a few things that maybe they shouldn't have. I still think the Klingon redesign was atrocious. Um, but they also distanced themselves from that once they heard that people loathed it. Um, so no, Discovery is awesome. I'm gonna miss it. I, I, yeah. It's a it's a good show. I've kept up with it. I like it. Good. Yeah, I'm interested to see what it's gonna be like a thousand years in Starfleet. Like. What the story is going to continue to be? I was just are you are you caught up? Have you? I have think you I up? am. It's been a bit. I know yeah. they're in. I know they're they've already done some stuff in the future. Like the Federation's yeah. kind of teetering on. I was going to say spoiler something. alert. There is no star. Right, something like that. Like they're yeah. out of warp. Yeah. The lithium crystals or something. And yeah, that part something. was a weird. They yeah. kind of skirted past that because it was weird. Yeah. Anyway, but. Anyway, you win some, you lose a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. So the little synopsis here uh, that kind of finishes out this little article announcing the the final season. The fifth and final season will find Captain Burnham and the crew of the USS Discovery uncovering a mystery that will send them on an epic adventure across the galaxy to find an ancient power whose very existence has been deliberately hidden for centuries. But there are others on the hunt as well. Dangerous foes who are desperate to claim the prize for themselves and will stop at nothing to get it. Romulans. The Dominion. Ooh, Dominion would be better. It's always the Romulans. It's the Ferengi. <gasps> oh my god. The Borg. No, the Borg are back. We've, over, like a... we've overused the Borg. I'm sorry. <laughs> there have been <laughs> no modern Borg. Imagine how cool you could do the Borg with modern technology. Like, I mean, we kind of touched on it in Picard, like a right. little bit. But it was post-Borg. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I mean, the Borg thing was fine, but I think they just beat it to death in the, in the like series. The Borg. I like the book. Uh, so one more Star Trek story. Uh, this one, so you guys just brought up the J.J. Abrams series of Star Trek movies. Uh, so uh, Chris Pine, who famously played Captain James T. Kirk in the Star Trek series from J.J. Abrams, uh, he has told Esquire recently that he has not heard any news about the long-delayed Star Trek 4. And I quote, I don't know anything. 
In Star Trek land, the actors are usually the last people to find out anything. I know costume designers that have read scripts before actors. <laughs> That's dumb. Um, so anyway, he's, he's gone to say that he is frustrated that uh, he has not heard anything. But yeah, so not even an update um, on his end about the future of this movie. But it's apparently still in the works. Yeah, you know whoever announced that got fired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got fired hard. Well, I mean, even like J.J. Abrams announced it. Like actually, yeah, just reading this article, J.J. Abrams is the one that announced a fourth movie was coming. And that was about a year ago. So good news is most of the people that we need for it are like working, but they're not super busy. I'm going to say it. Bring bring in Tarantino. He wanted to do it, and I want to see the Tarantino Star Trek movie. I'm not sure anyone's actually ready for that. I'm so ready for that. I mean, we weren't ready for a lot of things Tarantino did. <laughs> that is, he made us ready. I keep trying to figure out what the trunk shot would be in Star Trek. It's just is it just like the back of the shuttle bay? Like I I don't know, or just an actual trunk? Yeah, <laughs> they just find one. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like looking into a control panel. No, no, no. They finally locate and open the Genesis torpedo. There are infinite number of things they could open. So, I mean, (laughs) (laughs) but it's going to be the Genesis torpedo. There there are a lot of containers in the future. Any, any, any number of them could be opened. (laughs) Two more small things I want to talk about before we get into our reviews. So this one is just a rumor and I will caution us. This is from a giant freaking robot.com article. And Which you guys tell me garbage. to always not use. I know. It is I know. so trash. I know. This is a trash website. We're putting it out there. We're putting them on blast. They suck because they are all, right. just all about the clickbait. Try to sue me. I don't but I don't give a toot. I want to believe that this article is true because the casting is perfect. So their sources, quote unquote, their reliable sources. Oh, shut up. Are saying that Henry Cavill, you know. My um, Superman, yeah, our Superman, uh, is in talks to play Captain John Price in a live action adaptation of Call of Duty for Amazon Studios. And he is perfectly British. He has a magnificent mustache. He is absolutely perfect for this role. He's constantly yoked. Constantly. I need to see this. He's never not ripped anymore. Like, I feel like he's at that stage where he just like can't anymore. You know, like he has to be yoked at all times. Yeah. If he lets it go, he'll never get it back. Never. Yeah, I get it. I mean, that's what Daniel Craig has said. Like he's going to stay ripped for the rest of his life because he knows if he gets fat now, he'll never get it off. Oh, yeah. And also, like, I feel like he's sort of typecasted for being yoked because he's always the yoked guy. And um, where he does where he, where he reloads Impossible. his fist. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. 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 Like fist <laughs> reload. yeah. yeah which was pretty pretty badass <laughs> i wish we had gotten him for multiple mission impossibles but no nah, he's not going back for a sequel <laughs> um no. okay so let's talk about all the ways this is crap so oh come on <laughs> oh, no <laughs> no here, I, here let, I come with some facts let me have this first off there is no call of duty movie announced period it says if amazon can get the rights which means they haven't okay but they also didn't have the rights to Warhammer, and they did just over the night. They got the rights to it. Yeah, because that was awesome and a they power could, play. Just saying, it could happen. But Call of Duty people have said, Activision has said multiple times they have no intention of making I know, a series. I know this is clickbait at its finest. Yeah, but can I just dream? I mean, yeah, you can dream. I've wanted a live action Modern Warfare movie for literally twenty years. You wouldn't like it as much as you like the games. I know. And even the games are kind of. So, all right. What? So, since, whoa, 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 hold on now. <laughs> Hot takes. Hot takes. How dare you, sir? Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. I mean, um, also, how many war movies can we have? All of them. Well, many considering more. that like, we, it's like, how many wars can we have? <laughs> true. It's got a good point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good point. Besides, speaking of eternal war, Henry Cavill's going to be busy with Amazon making Warhammer. Okay. okay. You know what? Okay. Yeah. Okay, and I would much rather have that than him with a mustache, regardless of how epic it is. Uh, so, so talking about really thin rumors about Henry Cavill, I actually read an article this week that the reason why he is not Superman anymore is that James Gunn is actually talking to him about being a different character. So that one's that one's come up a couple of times. Yeah. I've seen. 
Um, I wouldn't well, even when they made their initial announcement, they said that they've been talking and doing different th- and talking about talking about different things. Yeah. Yeah. They were just super vague that they never said what it was. Right. Right. Okay. But right. Could we handle him in the DCU? Not as Superman. No. It depends on who he's cast as for me. Yeah. If you look, if he looked like drastically different, I would be okay with it. Like if he was in makeup or something, I feel like when you look like that though, you just always look like Superman. <laughs> That's just what he looks like. I don't know. I mean, anyway, uh, he could uh, be Booster Gold. Hey, that's what, a, yeah, what a hey. plot twist. <laughs> yeah. Playing the guy with he's playing the guy with imposter syndrome about being a superhero oh when he God, was the perfect. most iconic superhero. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So an iconic Thanks, ironic superhero. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Right. Huh. All right, okay, James, Gunn, give me my money. I'll put that on our spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bold prediction. Henry Cavill as uh, Booster Gold. Um, so let's move into one more story. And unfortunately, this is a Josh was right moment. Why are we saying unfortunately? Because <laughs> we're just, you know, you can only have so many. Right. You're so, <laughs> sorry. You're always right. I'm sorry I spend most of my time being right. Uh, so Josh has been calling for months that the new CW show Gotham Knights will be trash. Oh, just absolute ass. <laughs> <laughs> and he was basing all of that just on trailers. But early reviews are in for the CW's Gotham Knights. And critics aren't impressed by the Batman family's show's messy story and characters. Uh, so there's several quotes in here. A couple of them. Uh, one is from CBR's Sam Stone. Uh, described it as a formulaic CW teen drama that fails to capitalize on its potential. Um, and so on and so on. So basically, it's the CW show that we knew it would be. And it's low budget. And there's no Batman. So I must say it. CW has only hit the nail on the head three times. One, most of Arrow. Two, the first half of The Flash. And three, Superman and Lois. Everything else has been a dumpster fire for one reason or another. Either because Warner Brothers wouldn't let them do stuff or just bad writing. Yeah. And like Jason, and I've ta- it is the antithesis of what Jason and I have talked about so many times. Give me a good story and I'll forgive a lot. These guys actually have fairly high production value, but most of the time the story is just booty. Yeah, like I can forgive CW's production value because like it's, it's the, a TV show. Yeah, like, and it makes you believe what you're seeing yeah, for the most part. Like, it gets it's not, the point across. Yeah. And every once in a while it's jaw dropping. Yeah. Like every once in a while it's amazing. Most of the Flash, well made. Yeah. Like super well made. So yeah, I don't hold that against it at all, but the the writing has been progressively worsening. Yes. Yeah. And they just keep doing the same plot over and over and over again. And then and they just, bring and, then they bring Oliver in saying, It'll get it better, I promise. <laughs> yeah, but we all know that when Arrow makes better. a promise, he <laughs> uh so yeah, so I just wanted to give Josh that moment. Um, thank you sounding like it's probably not gonna last long but any anyone important who's listening quit making batman properties without batman just saying speaking it's, of which, it's actually a super easy fix to most of your problems me and Corey were talking about in the car wait on the way home from cocaine bear about uh the show gotham mm, yeah. i like gotham a lot gotham gotham is the closest you can get to doing batman without batman yeah and that's because batman was still kind of in it he was pseudo present yeah but I still have my problems with Gotham. As we discussed that you would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, knew you, I, knew you. I mean, it's, it's, it's actually uh, the biggest one is just logistical. All of Batman's villains are way older than he is. So yeah. by the time he's Batmaning, they're all going to be like decrepit and in wheelchairs. So same. This is the same problem I had with the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. Joaquin Phoenix is like 60 and he meets a young Bruce Wayne at the gates. Clearly, they're never going to throw down. If they do, it's unfair. A yoked, <laughs> a yoked twenty-four-year-old world martial arts master just whooped up on a seventy-two-year-old in a wheelchair. Like that's not a fight. Like, that's, <laughs> that's not justice. I think Jason just pictured that in his head. Uh, <laughs> <That's> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jason just, went somewhere. <laughs> it was yeah. It was dark. <laughs> All right, let's get into our spoiler discussion segment where we're going to be reviewing Cocaine Bear, which is not a 
Pedro Pascal movie. Uh, but then we will also be talking about the season three debut of The Mandalorian, as well as episode eight of HBO's The Last of Us. So we're going to be kicking it off with Cocaine Bear. Cocaine. <laughs> so, uh, Jason, you did not go see this, but there's really nothing to spoil in this movie, so don't worry about it. Um, but Andre joined us for this one, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure he uh, regretted every moment of that. Um, I wouldn't say I regretted it. I, I don't know who's funding these movies. I, I don't know what this movie was supposed to be. And maybe it's my fault because I did not look this up at all before we went. But <laughs> did you need to look up cocaine? Yeah, yeah I, it's I, in I the name. Like, I feel like I did because I don't know. And I don't know if it's on this page somewhere. But like, is it was it supposed to be a thriller or a comedy? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, see, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the problem. That, no. <laughs> so for those who don't know. Cocaine Bear takes place in the 80s and is based on a true story. It follows a uh, drug smuggler who, knowing that his plane was going down, dumps duffel bags of cocaine over a national forest. And in real life, a bear got into it, ate like pounds of it, and promptly died. The story takes this idea and says, but what if he didn't? And uh, it becomes really ridiculous. Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. It's, yeah, the, the official synopsis was an oddball group of cops, criminals, tourists and teens converge on a Georgia forest where a huge black bear goes on a murderous rampage after unintentionally ingesting cocaine. But then intentionally ingesting a lot more. Cocaine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this synopsis said it reads like all these people join together just to go look at this bear. Yeah, that is so not what happens. It's actually a very, <laughs> it's actually a very interesting twisting tale. But yeah, don't don't lose sight. You're you're there for the cocaine bear. Yeah. If my only complaint was there could have been more cocaine bear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot more of the bear doing cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's 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 <laughs> the movie was really about all the people trying to get the drugs for different reasons. Yeah. Um, the most compelling of which being Ray Liotta's last last film before he passed away. R.I.P. Yeah. Um. Which that dude was awesome. Like I miss Ray Liotta. Yeah. Um. Even in this movie, which is clearly farcical, he did it straight faced. He was awesome. He was intimidating. Yeah. He is. Is I don't know. He, he's he's great. I I miss Ray Liotta. I wish that it focused less on the people and just leaned into it being a ridiculous quote unquote horror movie where the bear is the monster. I think if it had done a little more of that and a little less of the people running around chasing each other, it would have been more fun. You know what would have fixed it. More of it being at night. I hate movies at night. It's so much harder to see things. That's the idea. That's the idea. That's what <laughs> makes it a horror. <laughs> like, did you bear. see the bear or didn't you? Yeah. Or was it a bush? I will say the one thing I appreciated about the movie was the over the top violence. Yes. Yes. It was. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that part no worked. Reason. Yeah. That was that, the best was part. Good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so if and, and don't get me wrong, like I, I generally speaking, I enjoyed the movie. It is by no means a masterpiece. I don't think it's going to be a, an awards contender, but the part of the movie that I went to see, which was a bear on cocaine murdering <laughs> people, solid five out of five. Uh, well, I will say, I mean, a highlight for me was Mr. Han Solo, Alden Iden 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 Rich. I don't know. How to I don't think you should. Alden Iden 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 I'm sure he's yeah. some kind of German. So most famous for playing Discount Ben Han Solo. Yes. In the solo film that came out a few years ago, he was Han Solo. Actually, that's not fair. He was a good Han Solo. I was about to say he Han did Solo. he did good. He he did good. Yeah. He was not the problem with that movie. No. Yeah. So no, he was fantastic in this movie. Like he was going through all the ranges of emotions and comedy. I did not realize that's who it was until you said that at the end. No, I'm sorry. You Mostly mean... because he I'm pretty sure this is the first thing he's done since Han Solo. <laughs> No, I I thought he was fantastic. Uh, he was funny. He he showed some emotion. It was uh, great. I liked old uh, old dude who played David. Ice Cube son. Yeah, Ice, Ice Cube Jackson. son. Yeah, Ice Cube son. Yeah, yep. He's fat crushed ice. ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> old no. shaved ice. <laughs> so so I will say. I mean, this is very spoilery. If you're trying to avoid spoilers for this movie for some reason in our spoiler uh, section. I guess towards the end of Act Two, maybe Act Three, uh, where O'Shea Jackson and Alden get to the gazebo to find the cocaine, and the tech and the detectives is on top of the gazebo. <laughs> like that entire scene of them like avoiding each other and like shooting at each other while also avoiding the bear 
I love that scene. That was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a highlight of the movie. <laughs> like that was great. I so. also loved how the fact that he they shot off his middle and pinky finger. Yes. And but then missed the ring finger. Yeah. And then, then commented about it. How'd that even happen? <laughs> How did you even those two fingers are even next to each other? <laughs> he collected the fingers. Yeah. Oh. No. So Jason's if, looking at us like, what happened? <laughs> no, so if you're looking for like an hour and forty five minutes of just pure turn off your brain and just watch something ridiculous. You have to watch it the same way you watch Transformers. Yeah. If you turn your brain off, Transformers is amazing. It's when you start trying to analyze it that it falls apart. Don't do that. Just watch it. Just shut up and watch it. I appreciated the cocaine bear more when it was uh, like comedy instead of it trying to be scary. So like the gazebo scene when he like goes to sleep or she, I guess, technically. Yeah, it, it, yeah technically it's a mama she, bear. She, yeah. Bear, so, yeah. Uh, goes to sleep on top of the guy. But yeah, just lays down on him, just mm-hmm. passes out. He eats yeah. the cocaine, starts like trying to walk backwards. Like that was. Yeah, it's hilarious. hilarious. Like it's it's. I had fun. That's my, the best way I can put it. My actual uh, uh, best part for me was the score of the movie. The score went pretty hard. Yeah, dude, yeah. dude was not doing it for a budget horror movie. No, but like he was. He was like, "No, we're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna it. go all in on yeah. this." And I loved it. <laughs> uh, so we are going to be scoring this one. Okay, uh, Jason, you Ooh. can use his score to determine if you're going to go see this or not. <laughs> Oh, that uh, window is already shut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm giving it, I think, four out of five. You are insane. Four out of five. <laughs> I I also am giving it four bricks of cocaine out of five. What are we? What? <laughs> so you're gonna have to learn that their that their their standards of movies are not. Wow, hold on. Now. <laughs> See, that's not that's not fair. I'm Jason cheesy. watches Jason watches every movie through the lens of a of a critique as far as structure, story, everything like that. I watch movies based on the type of movie it is. Yeah. No, no, hang No, okay. Now, so like if, I was, <laughs> if I was grading yeah. this movie compared to like Schindler's List, obviously it's a one out of five. Okay. You're right. But I'm not grading it like I would grade Schindler's List. I'm grading it like I would grade a movie called Cocaine Bear. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, in my defense, in my defense, <laughs> Jason once dropped I, a perfect movie down half a point. Because one particular fight scene lasted a little too long. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little crazy. I mean, I'm sorry was... that facts are hurting your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I have one word for you, Willow. Ooh, Willow's rough. Oof. The series oof. or the movie? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big oof. No, okay. Now I love Willow, but I also recognize that it has its significant flaws. And so I would, I would. Anyway, no one's go, asking you, to, Andre. No one's Andre, asking you to defend your your, your favorites, bro. No Andre. one's asking you to defend. No, we Cocaine love your rating score system. It balances everything out. That's right. But sometimes you're just wrong. So Andre, no, let's get Christian's <laughs> score. Uh, four to five. Four to five. Oh, oh, sounding pretty consistent. But then we got Andre. Go ahead, new guy. <laughs> no pressure <laughs> apparently we're crazy what up freshman <laughs> I, <laughs> i'll take it I, I will i will say the highest i can give it is a three uh in my head i, I mean don't be pressured like give it what you think it's worth it's like it's two like, okay. okay oh wow, wow like coming right out the gates two was what i was going at <laughs> okay that's that's fine like your score is your score bro even when you're not, wrong not a fan <laughs> uh so averaging all four of those together that puts study 3.5 out of five seven out of ten to see movie i feel like that's fair yep, actually fair. yes see see we got see, we usually end up with a pretty accurate score I see agree. jason we see even without you we got you see it's it's all fine someone all here fine. someone was here to crash the score <laughs> so we, we so got it covered someone okay. was here to bring balance <laughs> to the insanity all right, starting to sound like a Sith, but it's whatever. Exactly, that's the point. Uh, so let's get into our next review topic, which is The Mandalorian, Season 3, Episode 1, Ba-do-ba-do. which is Chapter 17. How do you pronounce it? The Apostate? The, the Apostate. The Apostate. The Apostate. Um, so yeah, Mandalorian. It's back. It's back. It's back. I don't even know how to sum up what happened. So gosh, I mean, nothing really happened. Yeah. yeah. Not, I mean... A lot of set up little things happened. Yeah. I mean, it was the first episode of the season. Yeah. So it, it picked up essentially where we left off in the book of Boba Fett. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> that travesty. After, after it hijacked the book of Boba Fett. Um, Mando being disgraced, having removed his helmet voluntarily, How dare not you. even against his will, must uh, reclaim his honor by bathing in the waters of something beneath something. The waters, the, 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 mind, the waters in the mind beneath, beneath, beneath Mandalore. Sure. Yeah. And um, this is a bit more difficult than it sounds because the Empire glassed all of Mandalore. Um, turns out if you start a society that does nothing except for mess up other people's societies, they take that personally. So yeah, he's got Grogu back because Kathleen Kennedy didn't want uh, Grogu to be out of the show for too long. <laughs> and, and, uh, and he decides that he'll need some help to get back to Mandalore. So he goes to see old Carl Weathers and we get to see how, how that little civilization has progressed, which is neat. Every time we go back to that place, Things have changed. It's grown. It's gotten bigger. This season, it's it's kind of become more civilized. There are children. There's yeah. potted plants everywhere. There's some greenery, which on a desert planet is kind of cool. Um, and his big thing is to actually try to bring back Taiki Watiti's droid, which heroically sacrificed himself at the end of the last season. So, like like Jason said, there's a lot of setup. Mm -hmm. If you if you go, I mean, like. Literally, I just described the entire episode like that. That well, was pretty you, much it. You like scanned right over the coolest part of the episode where they're battling that gigantic monster. Oh, yeah. We had to get an obligatory secondary villain. So uh, they the turtle gator. The, yeah. So they they pissed off swamp thing in space. And uh, <laughs> well, that was awesome. It was an awesome. It was, okay. It was, it was okay. Cool. Did, did anybody realize, though, I think that he intentionally the director uh, was it Dave Filoni that directed this one or John Favreau? Uh, it was one of the Fs. Yeah. yeah. This was actually uh, Rick from... From Mui Wua. From, oh. from Mui Wua. Okay. Uh, right. The third well, F. The, the... Oh, that's an F. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> so, did... Okay. Did any of you think that we were watching a flashback scene? Yes. Until... Okay. I yes, think that was that was, that was a good misdirection. That was a good misdirection. And I really yeah. appreciated that. I'm like, oh, nice. <laughs> it was also funny because Corey said, can we talk about how far they are in the water? And then, boom, monster came <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which did a death roll, by the way. It, right? You know, I thought, I thought yeah, that was cool. I, yes. I know it, what that is because of the crocodile hunter. Uh, Rest in peace. Yeah, RIP. Well, man. Yes, I, yes I, we definitely all thought that was a flashback scene. Mm. So we were watching that on my TV, uh, and it like defaults to Dolby Cinema View or whatever. Mm -hmm. Weird flex, but okay. And <laughs> 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 Well, yeah. Because it was... It was awesome like it was like perfectly surround sound and like the picture was beautiful yep like it was it was great like that was production value off the roof well they should it's disney's like biggest franchise right now yeah not star wars the mandalorian yeah yeah oh yeah this is my uh i should probably should have said this at the beginning this was my first look at the mandalorian yeah so we okay. made christian watch season three first because he's never seen the first two seasons <laughs> luckily the recaps were actually pretty solid pretty yeah yeah like i don't really feel like yeah it was anything. so but yeah having seen it for the first time on season three how'd you like it i mean it had all the stories elements you know space um blaster guns and violence cute little yoda guy oh yeah <laughs> You get it now, right? Yeah, I totally get it. Like, yeah. I only see like the plushies, and I'm like, yeah, it's cute, whatever. And actually, in the show, adorable. Yeah, you yep. just want to squish them. <laughs> and we talked about this. Uh, we talked about this. A little, I'm so glad that they had the gumption to stick with the puppet. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Instead of like, made it cuter. To, uh, yeah, like CGI. You, you know, like yeah, like yeah. it's it's you'd think for a big budget thing, like they would eventually give into that urge to just do CGI. Yeah. John knows. You know, he knows. John, he knows. Yeah, even all the yeah. like the smaller elemented uh, characters that we meet in yeah. the episode, yeah. still puppets. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, that that was the part that I laughed. My, I actually laughed out loud alone watching this thing <laughs> when uh, when Grogu kept hugging the uh, yeah the yeah, little, yeah, little yeah. droid yeah. mechanics. Yeah, or yeah the mechanics, yeah. and then and then <laughs> finally gets him away, and then he goes after him again. Like yeah. for some reason, I, I didn't. I don't know. I thought that was hilarious. It was. Yeah, yeah. it was great. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, okay. it would, I don't think it would have been it would have hit as hard if it was animated. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about since this is the Pedro Pascal 
Extra <laughs> Extra. Uh, Extra. Uh, the best daddy Pascal moment was when they were in the cruiser in with uh, Grogu. And I did not realize that the Grogu compartment connected to the cockpit. And so mm. when he crawled down and like cuddled into the Mandalorian's lap, it's just like a cute little moment. Loved it. My favorite part was when the uh, the asteroid fight sequence yeah. kicks mm. off. That was a good one. And he, he takes Grogu and he shoves him in the bandolier and tightens the bandolier. Right. I was wor- okay. I was wor- trying yes. to figure <laughs> out. Yes. 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 <laughs> because there's no seatbelt. Right. So you just got him in there and. That was a good fight down. scene too. That was a good. Yeah, that was scene. my favorite part because uh, at yeah. the end when he was like really getting after him, and every time he pop out, they'd go wow, yeah, yeah. wow. I was like, that's music nerd there. Thank you for yeah. the sound effect. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. too. Well, you know, it, it felt like a shout out to episode two. Yeah. Why well, remember the the big Boba Fett? Well, I guess yeah. Jango Fett. J- yeah, Jango Fett. You know, they he released the little the little depth charge in space. And it would do the flash and the wow. Like, it's a, go back and watch it. No, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're with you. <laughs> yeah. Like, just, just go back and watch it. Anyway, took me um, back. Took me so, back. so outside the actual episode, um, I saw a lot of articles this week where they were painting the episode. Where they were saying it, um, that they, they misstepped or they misfired. Um, that they that the only good thing about the episode was I, I know, I know. Um, Incorrect. Josh is, yeah, Josh is giving me weird looks. At Factually inaccurate. Is. Right. I know. And I'm fake and I'm news, like, fake news, <laughs> wrong, wrong, but it fake wasn't, news. it wasn't just one, one uh, site. It was several. So I was just wondering <laughs> if, uh, if any, if anybody thought that would be accurate to any degree. No, well, it was excellent. Yeah. Let's okay. talk about it. Let's get into scores. Because I feel like oh, okay. we've touched on all of the points of the episode. Okay. How are we feeling about it? Who wants to go first? I'm going to start off with a five. I was pleased. Dang. I was very pleased with that. Jason yeah. never comes out the gate with the five. Never. This is okay. With I'm the s- exception of Star Trek. Fair enough. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to disappoint. But we're used to, to be it. fair. No. Okay. <laughs> haven't seen the rest of the show. For right now, I'll just give it a four. Not disappointing at all. Yeah. <laughs> four is a good score. Yeah. Four. Oh, okay. yeah. okay. getting it a four. I feel better. Andre, four. All right, Josh, bring it home. Five animatronic puppets out of five. Nice. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I don't. You guys- I don't know. I don't know what I would have changed. Like it's. It was a good setup. Like right. Yeah. No, that that was kind of my my thing. Is that it? Really did feel like a big setup. Oh, so it thing. left you wanting more? Yes. Like Which, a good show should. Yes, but <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I I, I really I love the um, taking Pedro back to zombies when his, he tried to prepare his robot friend, and it came back like destroy, destroy. <laughs> okay, I forgot about that scene because I saw it coming. Still a little horrifying. It was still suspenseful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was scary almost. But no, very very solid episode. Uh, Average all five of those scores together. We're at a 4.4 4 out of 5 after one episode of season three of The Mandalorian. Keeping in mind that one of these scores is from someone that's not seen the first two seasons. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> okay. You just got put in our place. Yeah. All right, let's bring it home with our discussion and review of HBO's The Last of Us episode eight. When we are in need. Mm. So this picks up where we left oh. off two episodes ago, where Joel has been stabbed and uh, he's not doing so hot. Um, so Ellie goes out on the hunt looking for s- some food at least, but then comes across some strangers. Uh, she makes a bargain. You can have the deer if uh, you can give me some medicine. And uh, then all hell breaks loose. Of course, there's a double cross. Okay. Of course. Makes good TV. Yeah. Yep. It would have been super disappointing if they didn't. Although, I gotta say, if there was one weakness in this episode, I thought it would have been nice to see a civilization that is good. That is not fundamentally broken. Which I guess we kind of got at, you know... Yeah, with, Jackson with, Hole. Yeah, I guess we kind of got that with Tommy's yeah. little thing. The communist. But yeah, the communist. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, that's right. <laughs> You know, Josh, it's funny that you say that because I actually had that same thought um, when they were looking for for Joel. That's when yeah. I had the thought. 
was where yeah, they were and, looking for him. And and I mean, I suppose that's that's part of the setup is they're supposed to want to make you feel like, could they please just be good? Yeah. Could well, technically, the town is good. Just the guy yeah. running it was kind of bad because he really? said in the episode that him and like two other people knew that they were actually eating people. Yeah. And everybody else was like, all right, it's meat. I'll eat it. Yeah. So it's like mm, they were good in a way. But the guy that made all the decisions was kind of a piece some questionable of, yeah. calls. Yeah. <laughs> had to have to sit him down for a second. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Troy Baker making his live action debut in this show. He was the voice of Joel in the video games. The actor of Joel. He did all the motion capture, too. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was nice to see him finally in here. I, I was like he actually said in the uh, little commentary after the, the episode, he was actually kind of thinking he would just be like a clicker or something like a little Easter egg. But no, he was like a full character speaking lines. He was in the entire episode. So it was nice to kind of see him. Which one was he in there? He played. He's uh, the one that gets cleaved in the neck. Yeah. Oh, right. Cleaver. Right. As they're about to, to dismember Ellie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tiny pieces. Tiny pieces. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, but yeah, so other things that happened, uh, what, what else? Oh, what else? when, um, Penison and Joel was just murking folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Penicillin's a hell of a drug. <laughs> yeah. Cause he was talking to the guy. He was like, show me where your little town is. The little resort is. All right, cool. Died. Yeah. <laughs> and just took out the other guy. No questions. Oof. Nobody brought up the taking the gloves off and just slapping. The- oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Little little preacher guy. Yeah. Just, just backhanded that girl yeah. with yeah. Like a ring hand Jeez. to the ground. Right in front of everyone. <laughs> and nobody said anything. Nope. In fact, Great. they went and got him some soup. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if anything, he was rewarded for this. Some human soup. Yes. Oof. <laughs> Oof. No. OK, so I have to say my obligatory thing. They call that long pig. That's not what I was going to say. <laughs> Where, yet again, the story that was in the video game was exactly what happened in the show. They just gave you some more backstory and they kind of like changed up things, but it all led to the same place. Yeah. So in the game, the same thing happened where Ellie did go out hunting and she came across those strangers and they kind of did have a little barking going. And actually, the same thing happened where he's talking to her and he kind of, you know, says, I know that it was you and Joel that killed my man. Um, so that all played out the exact same way. She still got kidnapped in the game. Um, and Joel ended up waking up from his his coma and actually goes in, in after her. Um, so that all played out exactly like it did in the game. The difference is that in the show, we got some more backstory on the preacher guy. Yeah, they made him into an actual character. Yeah. So instead of just generic evil people in the woods. And, and they went kind of hard. Like he, he was a creepy guy. Yeah. A creepy guy. Well, they also... They also let Ellie rescue herself. And I love that. Right? Which yes. was nice. Big fan of that. Yes. Um, we have no doubt that Joel could have gone in there hard and gotten well, done what he needed to get done. They kind of gave us the best of both worlds because we got to see him go ham in a couple guys. We did. Uh, I can't believe we forgot to mention the part where he threatened to pop off a dude's kneecap. Yeah. Oh. And, then, and then it made a sound when he moved the knife. Yeah. Oh. You, can, oh. you can just feel it. Oh. Oh. And then he killed him anyway. <laughs> yeah. Right. Do the sternum. But no, but I like the callback to, I think it was like episode three, maybe where he's like, okay, point on the map. And if your friend doesn't point at the same place, like that was back from when they've done that there. a few times. They yeah. did it with the Tommy thing too, when they met the old people in the, in yeah. the woods or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like that's, I like that. And if I ever end up in a shady situation, that's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to ask both of you and you both better point to the same place. Yeah, I was about to say, though, you, that only works if you have more than one person that you're dealing with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and your dead body better point to the same right. place. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, Josh, you twice now you've you've hit two points that I wanted to make. I was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jason. No, no, no. It's good. No. I mean, but it also I like that that we're catching the same things. Yeah. The important things, I think. Um, I think it's sad, though, that she ended up having to save herself. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's not going to be the same after. Yeah. This. She went berserk mode at the at the end when she took out uh, the old preacher man. Yeah. So that part actually did play out a lot more intense than the game. Okay. Um, so yeah. that is a bit of a character arc jump than what we got in this point in the game. Slight spoilers, but this is kind of the alley that we see more into the second game. Hmm. 
where she is a little bit more intense. Um, so it is, it does seem like it's kind of leading up to what we're going to see next season. But yeah, that, that whole moment with her and the preacher inside that burning house, like or the burning building, there was a burning building. She was escaping from people in the games, but she did not have that, that intense berserk moment. In, the, in the end, it's still Joel that saves her. Yeah. And mm-hmm. in this, in this version, like I said, physically she saves herself. Right. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but the end, they still got it out of me. A little welling up. <laughs> Every episode. Once you finally realize that it's Joel that's like trying to. And he calls her it. baby girl. Like, oh mm-hmm. my God, dude. The hug we've all been waiting for <laughs> for eight episodes. You pieces. Like, like we've seen him caring about her. But this is the first time he like opens up to her and like embraces her in that way. Yep. So that, yeah, that was a big emotional moment yeah. that we've been waiting for all season. All season i felt nothing it was also the first time i've seen it so, yeah <laughs> little little thing here we made andre watch episode eight first? after having not seen episodes one through seven yeah. Yeah. God. well so he was in the room he's like don't worry i gave him a quick synopsis he, quick. killer mushrooms he will not be scoring this episode we're yeah. not gonna jade our score with his yeah, yeah, so as a standalone like episode andre what do you think i liked it i, I did like it um i kind of looked at it a little differently than I, I guess everybody else. Like I, I very much appreciated her saving herself. I appreciated the um, accurate gunplay, like the cycling of the bolts when she had the, the guys drop their rifles was good. The slide yeah, that was good back on the pistol when he's shooting at her, when she runs away, um, that was good. Um, I'm here for accurate gunplay, but it, it was good. I like I, my score is not going to count again. I would have given mm-hmm. it probably 4.5 or five, but nice. Nice. Yeah, it was solid. I, I I may actually go back and watch. There it is. Very cool. That yes. is, you that should. is yes. the testament you should. to the show right yeah. there. Right there. Okay. I'll just Excellent. say, get ready for episode three. Oh, God. <laughs> rip your freaking <laughs> heart out. <laughs> uh, so I think one more point for me. I think it's probably the most important point in this entire episode. Christian, it was a real horse. <laughs> <laughs> except, for was, except for when it wasn't. Except for when it wasn't. Um, especially all uh, when it was all yammed up in the the garage. Those <laughs> yammed up, <laughs> yammed up. D- explain that. Up on a Thursday. Please define. Please, no, up. please don't <laughs> explain that. I have never heard that term before, <laughs> and we'll never hear it again. <laughs> Means it's thick. Three C's thick. <laughs> All right. Any other points of uh, conversation for this episode? <laughs> that bang was thanging. <laughs> ah. Well, this is uh, this has gone somewhere. It wouldn't be an episode if we didn't go off the rails. <laughs> we <were> so close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> Oh, but anyway, did we hit all the big points? Um, Um, Yammed up. (laughs) 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 Ah. Oh, God. Oh, it's going in the lexicon. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Oh, dear listener. Uh, The one. (laughs) Uh, The one that's still with us. I apologize. Uh, I'm not cutting this. So, <laughs> listener, I, uh, I hope you can make it to the end of the episode. Uh, listen to that. Um, but yes, any more moments? Let's let's wrap this up. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we covered all. Christian's of them. literally crying. <laughs> <laughs> Josh might be too. I think Jason's taking his glasses off. I'm pretty off. close. I, I had a wipe my tear. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, 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 um, I, I definitely expected this episode to definitely get us more action because a lot of people were really scared about if it was going to go in a different direction and just be another filler to the end and like pop off so, at the end. Yeah, so Josh mentioned that last week. He was worried that there was going to be two back to back slow episodes. Correct. Do you think that happened? No. Okay. No, and you were right. This is the Corey is right segment. Yeah. Hey, there you go. So, can it alternatively be Josh is wrong? No, I like nope. that better. <laughs> <laughs> we need a sting for that. <laughs> nope. No, I will say, I mean, the first half of the episode, there was no action. It's like it was slower paced, but it built mm. built up to something pretty significant. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think we had two uh, slow episodes. Yeah. Um, I do think that this is 
a great episode leading up to the finale, which should thinking, be pretty heavy. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think the finale is going to be nuts. Yeah. Because we know we know how it ends. We got a little taste of Joel losing his cool in this episode, and that's going to be like on triplicate next episode. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Joel, yeah. Joel Miller is a dangerous man. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Let's score it. And uh, as a reminder, for this show, we've been doing just updated scoring throughout the, the series because it's all just one really big story. Um, so this is an updated score for how we're feeling about the show as a whole. So currently across the board, Josh is at a five. Jason's at a 4.75. I'm at a five and Christian's at a five. Um, so how are we changing our scores? If we're changing our scores, who wants to kick it off? Um, I'm going to keep mine at a five broken knuckles out of five. Yeah. Mm. Five horse cheeks out of five. Mm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get Andre's score. I know yours is not going to be factored in, but just to chime in, I'd say four point five. Right, Having right. knowing nothing about the show till now. Cool. 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 Uh, I'm going to say five severed ears on the ground out of five. Mm. Oh, good one. <laughs> and Jason, that's what I was going to say. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, we're just stealing all of your stuff. Tonight. That's Sorry. okay. No, no, no. It, it just means that we all like you know have similar thoughts about things, which is good. Sorry, I stole the horse cheeks. No, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, let's go. Uh, let's go five. Oh, five miracle shots of penicillin. There it there is. There it is. <laughs> all right, so we're back to fives across the board. So if you can do that math, it's five out of five. Hey, we need to find out. Is that? Is that how you do penicillin? <laughs> oh yeah, like, I'm pretty sure. That's I don't. Not how you I don't. Do it. I don't think you. Inject I think it you get a shot way. in the butt, don't you? Like in that's what butt I cheek. thought. It was, it was a butt cheek thing. I think yeah. it's through like the a drip system. Like you get stabbed yeah. with the tube and it's dripped into you. We're well, yeah, in the I apocalypse, mean. people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if you end up in this situation, I think it's supposed to go in your butt cheeks. Like yeah, a don't, large, don't, like a large muscle group. Yeah, sort of don't don't take anything away from this episode. Do your due diligence. Go do that research. Yeah. We are not only- medical professionals. In any <laughs> yeah. Also, don't form. get stabbed with a half of a bat. Yeah, I mean, right. I guess if we're... Also good advice. Yeah, if we're <laughs> going to lay out ground rules. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I just... I, that was my only issue where I was just kind of like, I mean, which it worked for the story because she doesn't know. But I guess my big question is, would it work if you injected it basically directly into the wound? Yeah, I liked I liked her logic, though, is like she didn't know. Put it where so the, the logic the, would be yeah. put it where the infection is. Yeah. Right. And so I understood it. I didn't think it was right, but I understood the, the decision, which made it work for the story. Which, yeah. I mean, she also gave him like an elephant dose to. So, yeah. Yeah, so like even if it wasn't where it was supposed to go, I'm sure it circulated. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure it got the job done. Plus with like a certain population of this country or whoever's watching, probably were too squeamish to watch that part. So who cares? They didn't see it. They didn't even see it. <laughs> yeah, for the record, I think it goes in your butt cheeks. So I'm like highly allergic to penicillin. So that would have just killed me. If it was- <laughs> wow. wow. All right. So let's start outroing this. <laughs> Thank you for that intro or outro. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that wraps us up for this week, episode number forty-seven. Please, uh, that's so much. <laughs> Great. I, I try. <laughs> <laughs> Please come back next week, uh, next Tuesday, as we continue our discussion and wrap up this first season of HBO's The Last of Us. And I guess we'll be talking about The Mandalorian as well. Yes. Great. Yeah, we'll keep that going. Yes, finish, yes. finish up our Pedro Pascal. Extravaganza Part 2. Extravaganza. And yes. uh, what else is coming out? We got two more episodes until the first video episode. Two right? more episodes until the first video episode. If yes. we can get our like, equipment to work. We're gonna have to, <laughs> yeah. We should probably run some we were, tests with me. We went way too long with it working yeah. perfectly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like We were feeling pretty confident up until today. So, yeah. Not sure what's going on there, but we'll figure it out. And time for our big... Episode number 50 coming out in 50. So I guess three weeks. So look out for that. The uh, big L. It's the golden. Anniversary. Let's uh to wrap this episode up, let's see what's coming out soon. Oh yeah, we got stuff coming up. But isn't uh Strange New World starts this month, doesn't it? Do we have a release date for Strange? Do we have a release think date the f- I have not seen a release date for that, so you're yeah. making stuff up, sir. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, <laughs> nope you guys nope, gotta nope. Google I, that while I wrap this up. I'm so Googling. we have uh 
We have Scream 6 coming out this week. Woo! We have Shazam Fear of the Gods coming out on March 17th. Uh, we have 65. That uh, was his face movie. I think it is. Adam Driver. Him. Uh, also on March 17th. Uh, we have John Wick 4 coming out March 24th. And Dungeons and Dragons, the Chris Pine movie coming out March 31st. There we uh, go. A little bit further ahead. Uh, in April, we have Super Mario the movie on April 7th. Uh, Renfield, the Nick Cage Dracula movie on April 14th. I want to see that. All right, that's going to be a good one. That looks funny. Uh, Bo was Afraid, the Joaquin Phoenix movie coming out on April 21st. Uh, and then finally, we get a new video game, uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the new release date on April 28th. Uh, and that takes us to May. So some pretty fun stuff coming out soon. Do we have a release date on Strange New Worlds to wrap this up? 2023. <laughs> Okay. So sometime this year. Okay. All right. <laughs> Have me back for John Wick 4. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> so until episode 48 coming out next week, Christian, what should nerds be doing? Um, <laughs> I'd probably be offended. Yeah, Jason's um, upset. I didn't ask <laughs> <yeah>. him. <laughs> but as of right now, since the situation I'm going through, um, get your oil changed. <laughs> Um, make sure your tank is filled with gas and not water. Ooh. And also, eat, sleep, nerd. Take it easy, people.